Hello viewers at home, my name is Ayobami Adebuega, the producer of Husband and Wife series, and uh, it's a privilege to come your way with this interesting conversation. Uh, I have a very important personality in the studio, and uh, before I introduce him, uh, you notice that uh, for every of our production, uh, we try to as much as possible educate you about other issues of life ranging from medicine, law, and what have you. Uh, the reason is because we believe that filmmaking has so much to do with our day-to-day -day life. Uh, so, uh, I remember there was a time that someone asked me to come and talk about high VF in a program, and I was like, no, I'm not a medical person. Uh, most times when we bring content on your way, we do a lot of research, we ask questions, you know, from the, the professionals so that we can adequately educate our audience. Uh, today, we have a professional in the house, someone that uh, God has helped to rise. He's a medical doctor, a professor. Uh, let him uh, do the introduction himself. Uh, we are pleased to meet you, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, my name is Dr. Abi Oduma Deniron. I'm a professor of obstetrics and gynecology. I am a consultant obstetrics and gynecologist at the University of Ilorin, teaching hospital Ilorin, Nigeria, and a lecturer at the University of Ilorin. Thank you. Wow, uh, you, you didn't heard that you are also a pastor. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes, I also have an area of ministry in God's vineyard as a pastor. Great, yeah. great. Uh, I just, uh, I, I, I needed to add that because issues we are going to be discussing, we are going to be discussing from the perspective of scripture as children of God. Uh, not too long, we did a skit on genotype, and I saw a lot of questions that people asked and all that, comments and all that. So I was like, it's good for us to do more so that people can be well educated. Uh, Prof, sir, uh, I, I have some questions to ask you here, and uh, my first question is this. What are the medical conditions that need to be discussed before intending couples can proceed into marriage. Okay, thank you very much. Talking about marriage, we're talking about a couple getting involved at the highest level of close relationship. Now, therefore, before we go ahead and say, I do, there are medical aspects that we need to take care of. For example, we need to look at one, do I have any medical conditions that can be transferred to my partner and put them at risk? I mean, that is the group to which things like infections like HIV and not the rest of them fall into. Secondly, we need to look at do I have conditions that can be transferred to our baby and can put our baby at risk since we know that procreation is one of the important components of marriage. And that is why things like talking about the genotype of the couple as a determinant of the genotype of their children will come in. That is why other infections that can be transferred to the children like HIV and others will come in. Thirdly, I think we should also discuss do I have any medical condition that I'm treating that can limit my functionality? So for example, some people have you know, diseases or conditions that they are receiving treatment for on a chronic basis because once you are married, the lives of both of you are tied together. Hmm. And so these are some of the things we need to look at. Oh, look, 
I'm getting treatment for this, I'm getting treatment for that. So that at the end of the day, the functionality of either of the couple will not be jeopardized. Mm. And then also, maybe finally, we also need to look at, do I also have any other conditions that may limit my lifespan? You know, these mm. are all important mm. aspects that we need to look at. Now, the aim of looking at all of this is not necessarily to say, oh, cast as passion. The idea is that there are some of these conditions that can, number one, be managed effectively. There are some of them that their transmission can be prevented. And there are, it's also believed that once the couple disclose this to one another, the partners can help each other in complying with what we make that condition not to get worse. So this should be what we should put on the table and discuss appropriately before we go ahead. So that people don't go and discover later and then you like, oh, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. And mm. that can then cause a problem in their home thereafter. Wow. Wow, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, you, you, you've, you've spoken about three key areas. Uh, infections that can be, you know, transmitted to your spouse, then to your children, then the one that can shorten your life. Yeah. And so, sir, in all of this, where does genotypes fall? Okay, thank you. Now, we look at inheritance. And in inheritance, the basic unit of what we inherit from our parents is the gene. Now, this gene then controls the manifestation of various aspects of our life and structure. There is what we call the hemoglobin genotype. That is what we usually refer to as genotype. It's actually uh, the expression of part of these genes that are inherited from parents, such that it's the one you have in the children will depend on what the parents have. Mm. And usually it comes in, for example, then we have somebody may say, oh, my genotype is AA, my genotype is AS, my genotype can be AC, or it can be SC, or it can be SS. There are other ones, mm. but these are the common ones that I'm just you getting know, to know about the AC so there, are, there are even other ones apart from but these are the very common ones that we need to really be concerned about so the genotype of the offsprings are determined from the genotype of the parents so if you have a couple with a mismatch in their genotype mm. then it means that the probability of having an abnormal gene and their children is increased. So that's why it's important for intending couples to check their hemoglobin genotype before they go ahead. Hmm. Okay. Now, can you break it down? The common ones. Okay. AS, Marin AS, or SS, Marin AS, okay. or AA, Marin AS. I want you to break it down so okay. that we we'll know which one is carrying. Uh, the highest risk, which one can be managed, and all that. Okay, thank you. Now, the, the one we don't want is SS. Okay. That's the one we don't want because it's the one that is associated with the highest level of complications in terms of morbidity and uh, mortality. Now, if someone has AA, AA is like the best, if we can put it like that. So AA, marrying AA, beautiful. It means all their children will be AA. Mm -hmm. Now, if an AA person marries an AS person, they cannot have an SS. But for every pregnancy, there is a possibility that, a 25% possibility that they can have a carrier. AS is referred to as carrier. Okay. Okay, you are carrier of the gene, but it will not manifest because the A is going to mask Suppress. the effect okay. of the S. So it's okay. a carrier. 
So if you have A, A married A, S, it means that at the end of the day, there is a probability of having carrier, A, S, among their children. But when you have an A, S marrying an S, S, for every pregnancy, they have a 25% chance of having that baby to be SS. And when, when AS marries, marries AS. SS? When AS marries AS. AS, okay, yeah. There is a 25% chance for each pregnancy that that offspring can be SS. Mm. Now, when AS now marries SS, that probability then increases. Because what it means is that they have a 50% probability of having a carrier and a 50% probability of having an offspring that will be SS. Mm. So basically, those are the common ones. Now, if an AC, C is not as good as A, you know, put, to put in a way that all of us will understand, but it is better than S. Mm. So if somebody, let's say for example, somebody marries an, an A in a marry and an AC, for example, C does is not really a problem. They just have the children with AC, which is, of course, a carrier of an abnormal hemoglobin gene, but does not give problem. Okay. So the one that we are really particular about is the one that is SS. And that one will come in if you have an AS marrying AS. AS. Oh. Or an AS marrying SS. an SS. Or, oh. of course, an SS marrying an SS. SS. Wow. Okay, the 25% risk. Hmm. Because you see, you know love, Prof. Yeah. You've seen people in love, and uh, uh, as uh, a marriage counselor, uh, we've dealt with issues related to this. And people are like, we are in love. And then beyond love, they talk about conviction that the Lord is leading us. Uh, what's your perspective as a medical personnel and as a child of God, a pastor? It is your candid advice and opinion to believers who are watching this video and they are about getting married and they are AS and AS. That one is common. What is your advice? Thank you. Uh, it, it, it's important to note that one of the things the Bible tells us is that wisdom is profitable to direct. That's right. So, in all that we do, we cannot discount the rule of wisdom. And I want us to know that the available medical information they are for us to profit with her. So, people that are at higher risk of having offsprings, like the AS man and AS, which we know that there's a possibility of having children with SS. First, they need to sit down and count the cost. It is true that love can be intoxicating. Mm. But we must not forget that there are instances when love may not be enough. Mm. And this is one of the instances where love may not be enough to handle the aftermath of taking a decision that is inappropriate. I would advise and I would say that intending couples should not discountenance the wisdom in this medical information that is available. And that people who are AS are not advised to go into marriage with those who are AS. Of course, some people will tell you, oh, I know someone, he was AS, he married an AS. They have two children. And none is AS. None is AS. None is AS. Yes. But the, there are two questions or two scenarios I want us to consider. One, so we need to understand the fact that there are people with AS. When we, when we talk about this occurrence of this AS, 
Of course, we know it's a function of probability. But is the risk worth taking? In life, we talk about wise risks and we talk about foolish risks or mm. unwise risks. Mm. I think it's going to be an unwise risk to go ahead. Secondly, is the fact that we also have people who are heirs and they go married to a partner that is heirs and they have four children and all the four are SS. And I want us to know that an offspring that is SS is too much enough to cater for. Again, when we talk about love, we should know that in procreation, our decisions are not limited to us alone. What about the child that is going to be born? Uh. That may have to pass through a series of crises which can be avoided. So the question is this, if there is a risk that is significant and avoidable, I would advise that it is better to tread the path of wisdom and avoid that risk. It's not worth it. All right, okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, I did the research recently. Why I dive into feet that doesn't concern me is because of movie making. All right. Uh, like I said, you know, doing research about law, about medicine, whatever we are going to be talking about in our film, I want to learn about it. And in my study, I discovered that there is now a way medically that the process can be done such that people who have who are heirs can you know they, there's a way that they can uh, I, I remember when we were shooting that uh, film i was we, we called it in vitro and the medical doctor said is in vitro in vitro <laughs> that there is a way around it medically now that they can be assisted to avert having can you educate us on that? Well, thank you. Now, it, you know, I said before that genes, they are the basic unit of inheritance. Yeah. What we do with that is that it, we go through the process of, just as you said, in vitro fertilization. The egg, as it's generally called, or the oocyte of the woman is retrieved. We get the spermatozoa of the man. man and then we bring them together outside the body. That's why it's called in vitro. Okay. That means taking place outside the body. In vitro, yeah. So we have what we call the blastocyst. Now, this early stage baby, for our viewers to be able to understand, at the initial stage, consists basically of cells. So at that initial stage, what we do is, we, is what we call pre implantation genetic diagnosis. Mm -hmm. In other words, at that early stage, through the knowledge of science, we take some cells out of that early stage baby, and then we go and check, okay? So when we check, it will help us to be able to know what is the hemoglobin genotype of this particular blastocyst. Mm -hmm. So let's say at the end of the day, maybe they're able to have four or five or six fertilized uh, blastocysts. And then you do that. At the end of the day, maybe there is one that is maybe AS or that is AA. Maybe the others are SS. It is that one that is not SS that will then be picked and then will be transferred back into the womb of, of the, the woman, woman. Wow. for other processes to now follow, implantation and all the rest of that. So that we will, be, we try to get around it. But we also need to say that one, it's not cheap. Mm. And by, what about the success rate? It's not cheap, number one. And number two, we also know that generally in vitro or assisted reproductive techniques is not 100% successful. So we don't need to look at it how many people will be able mm, to afford. afford. Even if you are able to afford, it's not a guarantee 
that that one that has been transferred is going to stay. So couples may have to do some once may succeed, some may have to do twice or more. So it is true we are looking for a way around it, but it is not a cheap mm. alternative. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Wow. Okay, good. Uh, I, I, I like the way that we are balancing, balancing it because uh, some may say, oh, now we have option. Please do count your cost. All right. Uh, we've been talking about people planning for marriage and uh, how they need to take notice of all of this. What about people that are already married? Maybe in error. They didn't know. Or probably they despised cancer. You know, God is God of second chance and is a God of grace. Yeah. So what medical second chance do they have? I mean, AS that has gotten married to AS. Well, for those that are, are already married, uh, options available would include one, Leaving it to chance, mm. in which case for every pregnancy, that 25% risk comes in. But for every child that ends up with the hemoglobin genotype SS, it's 100% for that particular child. So that is mm. the risk aspect of that. Or if they are endowed, they can also go for assisted reproductive technique with all of the implantation diagnosis and all of that. But they must bear in mind that for every procedure, the outcome is not 100%. Mm. But that is an option that they can, they can explore. So what about in homes the where they have a child or two that are SS? Well, when people have, have children with hemoglobin genotype SS, uh, presently, what are the available treatment options? Uh, we need to know that one, there are options whereby we manage the condition. You know, you give them drugs. Of course, it's out from counseling, lifestyle modification, trying to avoid things that can trigger crisis. Then secondly, there are drugs that are in place that reduces the frequency and sometimes the severity of those crises. And then thirdly, which is the end thing now, they can actually go for bone marrow transplantation, which is more or less like putting quotes, a cure for it, so to speak. Mm. But mm. just as we said, and then people will be able to have, afford that. And then if the, the, the bottom line, all of this is, if uh, a negative outcome is preventable, mm. why not prevent why not it? Prevent Instead it? of saying, mm. let's allow it, and then we go and start looking for uh, options at the end of the day. Because, you know, I know of someone that they were like that, they got married, and they got to a point, one of the partners was overwhelmed. Mm. And one day, he just packed his bag and walked out and walked away. He don't even know where he is. He ran away. He just walked away. You see, it can be distressing and demoralizing. That should be the man, if I... That was the man okay. in this particular mm. case. Mm. So it's, it's... That's why I said the other time that there are points in life, especially in the journey of marriage, where I'm in love, I'm in love. Will not be enough mm. because these problems can be overwhelming, they can be demoralizing, and people can take decisions that are, you know, not in the best interest of all partners concerned. Mm. So it, it's always better to avoid it. Mm. Mm. It's always better. Mm. So, in a nutshell, uh medicine will not contradict the will of God. So we should not put God to test. Yes. I will say 
one of the ways by which we try, we confirm our conventions is that all other things that surround it, we also align, align with it. However, somebody may say, but we've seen people before. You yeah. know, that's always the point of reference. Yeah. We've seen people before. They are four children, none of them. Well, in Christendom, we know that there's something called mercy. And we cannot overemphasize the fact that Jehovah God is the Lord God over all. Yeah, the Almighty. The Almighty. He is a merciful God. But we should also not remember, we should also remember that we were told that thou shalt not tempt the Lord. The Lord. Thy yeah, God. Even if, and I think we also need to emphasize this, even if the couple say, whatever will happen, let it happen. We will continue with it. We will put up with it. What about the children that they're going to bring forth that we have to pass through these avoidable complications? Hmm. I think if you love someone, one of the tests of love is that anyone you love, you don't want to put them close to where there is harm. Mm. Mm. So if we know that there is a possibility mm. of harm, mm. and we claim that we love each other and we love the children, why do we want to put them through such a risk mm. that is harmful to them? Mm. I think it's a big risk. And, uh, it should be avoided by intending purpose. Oh, thank you very much, Prof. Uh, see, uh, uh, let me just speak to, you know, intending couples. That uh, all of these that we put together is to, by the grace of God, help you so that you can learn from other people's uh, mistakes or other people's circumstances. Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. If somebody comes to you sharing his conviction regarding marriage and you've gone to pray and you're having feelings and you're having conviction towards the fellow, please, the next thing you should do is to find out your compatibility regarding your state of health. So, Prof, sir, uh, finally, before we ask you to talk about surrogacy, because I actually have that in mind. Uh, that may be in the next video. Uh, uh, so, Prof, talking about uh, accountability, you know, being open to each other before getting to marriage, because we preach that a lot. Do not hide anything from one another. Are there medical conditions that you feel that it is safe for your partner not to know? Well, thank you. I said at the beginning of this discussion that when you say I want to get married to someone, what you are saying is that the totality of your being mm -hmm. is going to be exposed to that individual. The truth is that whatever you are, is a matter of time. Mm -hmm. It will come to the open. That's right. A lot of time, a lot of times it's because of fear. Mm. People are afraid. If I tell him this, maybe he will say, I'm not, not going I'm, I'm, again. Mm, mm. But the truth is that some of the things that we fear, those who have opened up to their intending partner, have said, look, what can we do about it? I'm okay. I'm going ahead. That's right. Because by the time they get to know, whatever it is that you have built will come down crashing. That's right. So it's important for us, medically, you should not hide mm -hmm. anything from your partner. I said earlier on also that partners are supposed or are expected to help one another in compliance with some of these medical conditions. These medical conditions, they are not a matter of life and death, many of them. 
But if your partner knows, for example, let's say for example, if I have diabetes now, and my partner does not know, and maybe my partner likes things that will worsen mm. my condition, mm. for how long am I going to run away from mm. those things? Mm. But if my partner knows, oh, my partner has this, then they mm. can modify things yeah. to help me. Mm. Both of them were naked and they were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. In fact, I know of a family. The man died at the age of 85. It was later that one of the children, toward the end of, his life, of the father's life, that the daughter got to know that, oh, my dad has diabetes. Mm. Now, this child is a medical personnel. So she now said, okay, that's the reason why we don't eat this. We don't eat this. We don't eat this mm. in our house yeah. when we were growing up. But we never knew. Mm. But that was possible because the husband the and wife, husband yeah. and wife were aware. So they, they control their be, diet. They made it to be like the norm in our family. That's right. And everybody moved along. And That's the right. man was able to live to the age of 80 something That's years. Right. That's right. I mean, right. you won't say someone that died at 80 something years had died young. Mm. But imagine if the man had, he had kept it as a secret. It's likely that mm. he would not have lived mm. as long as 84 mm. years. Mm. So, uh, medically speaking, Mm. Don't hide anything from the person you're going to marry because you'll get to know. Mm. Again, if you're hiding what can put them at risk, it means you don't really love them. That's right. It's an evidence that you just want to use them. True, true. And it is a proof that mm. you're actually selfish. Yeah. Because being selfless means considering the well being oh, of the oh, other yes. person. Mm. And when you hide those things, they are not considering their well-being. It is not correct and it is not biblical. I think we should be open to one another and take each other the way we are. In fact, it will help in reducing the cases of divorce that we are having now. Mm -hmm. Because some people, it is when they get to know some of this, they say, ah, no, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I can't put up with this. Mm -hmm. But if the person had known at the beginning, they wouldn't have gone ahead. Mm. But there is no condition you have that you will not find someone that will be willing to go all the way with, with you. That's right. Because of their conviction. That's right. But you need to know. That's right. And take an informed decision. Yeah. I want to go this mm. way. Mm. And it becomes easy mm. for the couple. And at the end of the day, everybody is there yeah. for it. Yeah. So there's no, there wow. should be nothing to hide. Yeah. Yeah. There should be nothing to hide. Nothing wow. To hide. Wow. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, Prof. So face your fears. <laughs> All right? Face your fears. There is nothing to hide. Trust should be the bedrock on which any marital relationship must be built. That has been awesome conversations, and I want to thank God for our Prof. You're welcome. God bless you, sir.